Cybersecurity researchers have discovered a new strain of malware that is targeting Linux systems called Font on Lake. And this malware tends to be accompanied by a rootkit, so it's actually pretty severe for the machines that do get compromised by it since it's gonna be running with elevated privileges and can essentially do anything that it wants on the machine. Now, some of the things that this malware has been discovered doing is gathering the credentials of the people that are using the machine, setting the compromised machine up to act as a proxy server, and of course, give the hackers a backdoor access to the targeted machine that is very common with many kinds of malware. Uh, but in fact, this one actually provides multiple fallback backdoors. Uh, so in case one of them gets closed, there's two or three other ones that it can use. And the modules of the malware that hold all the different commands that it can run are also being updated continuously. So the creator of this malware is actually making improvements to it in real time, which really makes it that much harder to detect and fight against. Uh, it's also a persistent malware. Now, that is primarily thanks to the rootkit that is installed with it, uh, but also the fact that it includes trojanized modified binaries that are standard on most Linux systems and that tend to run at startup. And another aspect of this Font on Lake or HC rootkit, as it's being called by Avast Labs, is that nobody knows for sure how it's actually propagating, how it's getting onto the infected machines in the first place. Uh, so far, it's only been discovered on a few machines in Southeast Asia. Uh, that combined with the amount of detail that has gone into actually developing this makes it seem like it isn't just some dragnet malware that is designed to infect as many machines as possible. It's probably being used to just target specific systems. And because of the capabilities it has to hide itself, it's probably meant to just sit dormant uh, for when a later attack is supposed to take place. Now, there's three kinds of backdoors that come with this malware, which I'll read over in this white paper that uh, details what we know about it. And I'll also leave a link to this in the description if you're interested in reading the full 29 pages for yourself. Uh, so backdoor one is the simplest of the font on lake backdoors. It downloads modified system binaries for SSHD as well as SCP. And this backdoor also gathers some system info by executing a Python script whose output is parsed into three different variables. Uh, and if this command fails, then the Font on Lake malware just assumes that you don't actually have Python installed. And then it tries to uh, install it with your package manager, either yum or apt. Uh, I would actually be surprised if it ends up having to run that very often, because at least in my experience, most Linux systems do have Python installed on them by default. Uh, now here are some of the currently supported commands that are being used by Backdoor1. And again, this malware is under active development, so this could change. Uh, most likely more commands are going to be added, but some of the things that it can do now is exfiltrate the credentials that are obtained, and it also has the ability to create and kill new SSHD sessions, uh, probably to kill off any legitimate ones and then run the trojanized version that copies your SSH credentials and sends them off to the hacker. Uh, also, the custom SSHD that is loaded by this malware has a hard-coded configuration. Instead of it uh, being loaded from a separate file, which is usually how you would get your SSHD configs, uh, it has its own hard-coded RSA key. And in this hard-coded configuration, the listen address is changed to localhost. It permits root login, meaning allows root login. Uh, I believe by default that's usually disabled. And it also enables X11 forwarding, which lets you interact with GUI applications remotely. Backdoor 2 primarily handles the proxy functionality. It also provides the means for directory listing, file manipulation, uploading and downloading files, as well as updating itself. And it also has a very interesting way um, 
that it resolves the command and control server to try and avoid any blacklisting. So first, the backdoor randomly chooses a domain from a list of 15 potential uh, command and control centers that it can use. And here is a list of some of the domains and IP addresses uh, with the ports for the CNCs that it might connect to. And these are ones that are taken from malware samples. Uh, so I would expect there to be more out there that it could connect to. And then of course, new domains can always be bought. You know, these have the classic format of just random alphanumeric string of characters uh, followed by like a .com or a .name. Pretty cheap to buy from a registrar since something like this would be completely useless for commercial purposes. Like these might be less than a dollar each. Backdoor 2 then resolves the domain and it sends an HTTP GET request to the IP on a non-standard port and the response is Base64 decoded and decrypted by AES with a hard-coded key and initialization vector. And the decrypted response will be the IP address and the port in this format that it's supposed to connect to. And the way that Backdoor 2 handles updates is also kind of interesting. So it removes its on-disk file at the beginning of execution. So it's just loaded into memory and not on the hard drive. It then goes into a never-ending loop where it forks the child process, it breaks out of the loop, and the parent process waits for it to finish. When it's finished, it checks in the same directory for the file that was just deleted and it executes it if present. So this mechanism is going to prevent any duplicate or old copies of Backdoor 2 running on the system since an update has to be placed in the same directory that the old one was deleted from. And after executing the updated Backdoor, it goes and then deletes itself from the disk again. And during the investigation of this backdoor, different version strings were actually found uh, throughout the code. I guess that they were uh, left behind. So we know that this is being actively developed uh, so far versions. 6.0.3 and 6.0.2 uh, have been discovered in the wild, or at least references to them have been discovered. Finally, Backdoor 3 is able to run in both client and server mode. It accepts remote connections and it has the functionality of the first two backdoors, uh, exporting credentials and running a proxy server, as well as the ability to mediate the IO of the scripts and commands in both directions. Backdoor 3 also has commands that are able to forward commands to the next layer and close all remote sessions. Uh, so it appears to have a little bit more control than the previous two backdoors. Uh, and of course, the rootkit uh, that is installed, its primary job is to hide evidence of what's going on. So hiding malicious uh, process IDs and covering up network traffic from them. Uh, so trying to detect this malware using onboard tools or that are on the infected machine uh, are going to be really difficult. Uh, so like I said in the beginning of this video, nobody really knows for sure how this malware is spreading and it's under active development, so pretty difficult to mitigate. But luckily, it seems to be targeting very specific systems in Southeast Asia. So the likelihood of you actually getting this on your Linux machine is very low. However, because this malware introduces Trojan versions of common Linux binaries, uh, one way to detect it would be to simply check the hashes of some of these uh, different binaries that are on your system. So you can see, for example, it's gonna try to load a Trojanized uh, cat program, Trojanized version of kill, SFTP, and SSHD. And these are the SHA-1 hashes uh, that were discovered for those. So as long as there's not a whole bunch of different Trojanized versions of these that it can load onto your system, uh, one way to detect an infection would be to simply run a SHA-1 on these. And then if it's outputting this same hash, then you know that you have the infected version running. And then other than that, just be careful about what you allow to execute on your machine because obviously this malware has to get onto your system in some way. So 
Don't download random files off the internet and then run them on your production machines or plug in a USB stick that you found in the parking lot and then try to run programs on it on your Linux system.